Life is not always perfect, and so we need to continue to try and perfect this technique, the art of the power of once, because that will increase your harmonious relationships and interactions with children. The power of once is a fantastic way to stop the ridiculous merry-go-round of constant repetition. And with help and practice, you will begin to have a better balance and productive interactions with the child or your team. Hello, I would like to share something with you that I have uh, used and perfected over many, many years. It's a really key technique for when working with children and being successful in your interactions with children. It's not my original idea. Um, it has been used by many, many teachers before. And I think if parents also use this technique, it will just make so, for so much more harmony within their house. So a couple of years ago, I listened to Dr. Frances Steinberg, and she articulated the technique so well, I thought I'd like to share her words with you today. There seems to be a strange habit that many parents and many teachers get themselves into. They've developed it, and for some reason, whenever they make requests or give directions to children uh, and to teenagers, they tend to repeat themselves. Does this sound familiar? Oliver, I want you to get back into your seat, into your car seat. Oliver, I'm talking to you. Oliver, I said, get into your car seat. Oliver, your car seat now. Oliver, we can't go until you are in your car seat. Oliver, get into your car seat now. That may be uh, <laughs> familiar to you. Or for an older child. Rachel, it's time to go to bed. Put your device down and get ready for bed. Rachel, I said, turn your device off. Rachel, did you hear me? I'm talking to you, Rachel. Don't ignore me. I said, turn your device off because it's time to get ready for bed. Turn that off now. I'm getting really cross. Okay, you cannot watch another program. It's time for bed. How many times did that parent say the one instruction? That repeated instruction over and over again. And I know I sound silly on the video, but maybe you do that quite often. And those repetitive interchanges are the norm more than the exception. And they are fairly unique to an adult-child relationship. You don't usually hear your boss or your employer say, I want you at that meeting. I want you at that meeting now. Did you hear me? I want you at the meeting. Oh, meeting now. That just doesn't usually happen in an adult relationship. So a repeated, repeated instruction or a repeated request um, often is an interchange between an adult and a child. So the, so the problem with saying things over and over again is that every time you repeat yourself, you actually you lose more control of the situation and you lose more power. So those repetitions and the time you repeat yourself, you're squandering power. It's no wonder that young people provoke us into doing this though, because it's an easy way for them to enjoy watching us squirm. So it, it also doesn't help to count to three. In fact, none of my teachers are allowed to do that technique because that's the whole routine. One, two, two and a half. That just teaches delayed obedience. And it also just teaches them how to count because they know exactly how much time that they've got before they have to listen and they have to obey. And they, and do what you ask. And what fun they are having watching you jump through all those hoops. So if we're going to effectively manage behavior, we need to break this repetitive cycle, this counterproductive habit, 
and, and there is actually a simple way to do it. So the power of once works on one simple premise. Never repeat an instruction or a request, and I mean never. So if you sh are sure that the child has heard you and that they understand what you're saying and what you're telling them to do, then don't repeat yourself. The trick is to know that you've given an effective instruction. And in another video, I will teach you about what effective instructions look like for the various age groups. Because if you've given an effective instruction, then it's easy for the child to understand and comply. So, um, it also we need to also understand, of course, the cognitive stages that a child goes through. But for now, let's think that we're talking to a child that is over three years of age. So let's go back to the point of never repeat yourself. Using the power of once, there are three possible outcomes or things that could happen um, when you've given that request and direction. So the first thing that could occur is that they hear you, they understand you, and they do what you ask them to do. So Oliver gets back into his car seat, Rachel puts her device down, and you ask, they do it, and man, life is beautiful. That's wonderful if that happens. The second thing that could happen is that they don't do what you want them to do, but they give you an acceptable reason why they can't comply immediately. So can I please have two more minutes on my device because that will give me enough time to save what I'm doing. I'll get to the end of the game and then I'll be able to pick up where I left off next time. Then I'll get ready for bed. Or is it possible for me to phone Harry now instead of after I pack my lunchbox? Because Harry's gonna to go to rugby and if I do phone him later, I'll miss him. So those are all plausible and acceptable reasons why maybe they cannot comply straight away. But it's important to know that you are the judge of whether the grounds for delay are acceptable and not them. So there's no sense getting into a debate, the back and forth debate, about the merits of their case. They state their case and their reason and you make the decision. Now the third thing that can happen is that they ignore you or they refuse to do what you ask. And if that occurs, this is the hard part. And most parents and teachers tend to sort of make excuses. Oh, they're tired. Oh, this can't happen. Oh, it's the end of the day. Oh, they must be hungry or whatever. So they make excuses for the child. But if the child has ignored you, and refuse to do what you've asked, this is a hard part, you must enact a consequence. So the consequence must be something that you can enforce without relying on their cooperation. Because if they didn't listen to you the first time, when you asked them to perform the task, then you can't depend upon them to carry out the consequence. Because if they refuse to follow your directions now, then you're gonna lose even more power as they refuse to follow the consequence. So don't tell them that they've lost the right to use their device. Just remove the power cord, the charger cable, the keyboard, so that they can't actually use the device. It goes out of power. Um, just the other day, I was looking after a group of four-year-old children. And it was, uh, it was the time where parents come in and pick their children up. There was only about 15, 10 minutes left before it was closing time. And so the children were playing quietly and there were a few things that they could play with. And let's just pretend that this child was called Mark, this boy. He was um, playing with the blocks and I said, yes, you can. he wanted to make dinosaur land and you know dinosaur um, jungle and city. And so he had the dinosaurs and the wooden sticks and the blocks out and the fences and the people. And he was creating this wonderful creation 
waiting for his dad to come and pick him up. He was happily playing and then he went off to go and get the train set to add to the, you know, his creation. And I said to him, Mark, no, there's only 10 minutes. Your dad's just about to come. We're not going to do the train set. It'll take too long to pack up. You just keep doing what you're doing with all the other things. So put the train set back. He sort of looked at me and he smiled. And then he just sort of slightly put the train set to the side, but still within his arm's reach. Well, anyway, just then another parent came in and that parent wanted to talk to me. So I got up and walked to that parent and I'm chatting away to that parent. And out of the corner of my eye, I see Mark go over to the train set and pick it up and start to add it. So he knew my instruction was no, but he wanted to do what he wanted to do. So I just said, excuse me to the parent. And I said, Mark, from a distance, Mark, I said no. He looked at me, smiled, and so then he turned away from the train set. Then as soon as he thought I was engaged in conversation again, he actually went off and got the train set again and started to do, use it. So I actually said to that parent, I said, look, I'm really, really sorry, but I have to sort something out now. Do you mind waiting while I sort this out? And the parent was all like, oh, okay, then fine. So off I go and I got down to, uh, uh, on my knees, looked Mark straight in the eyes and I went, Mark, I said no. Put it away now. He looked at me and went, right, okay, and he did put it away, straight away. But notice that when I was talking to him, I actually didn't do very well because I did repeat myself, right? I did repeat myself. I gave him my instructions and he was using the audience of another parent and my distraction to try and get his way. As soon as I made it very, very clear, um, he obeyed because he knew I meant, and it, whether a parent was watching me or not, there was going to be a consequence coming if he did not obey this time. But also, I did not threaten him, and this is what I hear so many people do. They go, if you don't do this, then I am going to do this, X, Y, and Z. And that is almost like a challenge and a confrontation where it could escalate because you are backing that child with into a corner by saying, if you do this, I'll do this. If you do this, I'll do this. Giving the instruction just very clearly and expecting them to obey. Actually, that's part of another video, but I just went into that. Um, okay, so, so I did slip. I didn't do the power once because I did repeat myself. But I know that I try very hard that when I give one instru an instruction and the child hears that they know that they must obey. I remember being um, within a primary school and I was working alongside uh, another male teacher and he had that natural authority. And honestly, I would watch him, he would just say something and the children would just do it instantly. And the, why did they do that? Because they knew that the, he wouldn't repeat himself, that he would follow through. He was a very good teacher, he was kind, he was friendly, but he was also known that, you know, if you were asked to do something, then, that, then you did do it. He was a good example to me of how the power of once worked. Life is not always perfect. And so we need to continue to try and perfect this technique, the art of the power of once, because that will increase your harmonious relationships and interactions with children. The power of once is a fantastic way to stop the ridiculous merry-go-round of constant repetition. And with help and practice, you will begin to have a better balance and productive interactions with the child or your team. So take the time to listen to this video again, as it does take some time to sink in and some time to practice. And it takes time to break a bad habit. If you're in a bad habit of repeating yourself with your child 
and constantly having these negative interactions, then it needs to change and it takes time to form a new habit. So I really encourage you also to look at my other videos on my YouTube channel, um, talk about the effective ways um, that you can interact with your children. If you like this video, don't forget to give it the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Thank you.